In this lesson, we'll be learning about operational amplifiers, which are going to serve to operate as voltage amplifiers for the audio signals that we're looking at in the class. An operational amplifier has a, sig a symbol that's drawn like so. It's a triangle with two inputs and one output. The first input is drawn with the plus sign and is called the non-inverting input. The other in input is drawn with a minus sign and is called the inverting input. Ideally, these amplifiers have infinite input resistance, which means that no current will flow into the amplifier, and they have zero output resistance, which means uh, that the output does not create what we call a voltage division with whatever load we're trying to drive, such as a speaker. If we look at the inside of an operational amplifier, such as the one that we'll be using today, which is the TL082CN, that you'll all have in your kits, you can see that it's quite complex. We have a, a lot of transistors and resistive loads and even some diodes. But we don't need to worry about the complexity of what's inside. The function is very simple. We can look at the pinout for the uh, tl 82 CN, and we can see that it actually consists of two operational amplifiers, and pins 4 and 8 are supply voltages. So looking at that again, we see that the amplifier will be marked with a circle at the top, or maybe a U-shape, to tell you what the orientation is, and then the pin numbers are as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll only be using one of these operational amplifiers today, but what we need to know is how to provide power to this. So we'll provide minus 15 volts to pin number four and plus 15 volts to pin number eight. Looking at the pinout again, we see that the output is pin number one, the inverting input is pin number two, and the non-inverting input is pin number three. So this is out, this is inverting, this is non-inverting, corresponding to the diagram over here. All right. Now what this amplifier does is provides gain so the input signals are going to be input to the amplifier and they'll be multiplied so that they're bigger at the output. They can never be bigger than the supply rails so whatever we do at the input can't cause a signal that's bigger than plus 15 volts or smaller than minus 15 volts. The first configuration that we're going to look at is called the inverting amplifier. The way that we create this topology, let's go to a new page. We take the amplifier. We hook the inverting terminal up to the output through a resistance, R sub F. We ground the non-inverting terminal, and we put the input through a resistor, R sub I, that connects to the non-inverting terminal. Now we can prove that the gain of this amplifier, VO divided by VI, is equal to minus R sub F divided by R sub I. So what this means is if we put an input signal in, the output signal will be inverted in phase, meaning that if it starts going up at the input, it'll start going down at the output, and it will be bigger. it will be bigger by the ratio of the two resistors. So if we set R sub F equal to five times bigger than R sub I, the gain of the amplifier will be minus five. 
we might do so by making R sub F 5 kilo ohms. making R sub I one kilo ohm. In which case, if we put an input signal in, we would see an output signal five times bigger. We'll use this configuration. We'll also use what's called a non-inverting configuration. In this case, we take the same operational amplifier. We apply our input to the non-inverting terminal. We apply a resistor between the inverting terminal and ground and we also go between the non-inverting terminal and the output terminal. With this particular amplifier, we can show that the gain VO divided by VI is equal to 1 plus R sub F divided by R sub I. So again, we can create gain just by setting a ratio of these resistors. And notice with this one, that even if R sub F is very small and R sub I is very large, we would have approximately a gain of 1. With this particular amplifier, if we put an input signal in, we would get an output signal that was in phase, meaning if the input started going up, the output would also start going up and bigger. Now remember that the output can't be greater than whatever our supply rail is or, our, or smaller than what our negative supply rail is. So if we put a signal in that's too big, what will happen to this amplifier is it will reach that 15 volt supply and clip at almost 15 volts. It'll actually clip below 15 volts. Here it would clip And this clipping would cause distortion in the signal. And what we'll do in the lab is try and cause the amplifier to clip and hear what distortion sounds like with an audio signal. See you in class.